I've just arrived here to this incredible city of Budapest and already I'm overwhelmed by the history, the architecture and its people. Over these next three weeks, we're going to be travelling with Scenic through Eastern Europe on a trip that I've been living my whole life to take. I've long been fascinated by this part of the world and thanks to Scenic's Danube Delta Discovery Tour, I'm about to uncover the best of it. Thank you very much. Delicious. Yum, yum. Look at this. The food of life. Oh, wow. It's gorgeous. <laughs> I like your wine. <laughs> the journey begins in Vienna with a visit to the majestic Schönbrunn Palace. But we've joined in Budapest, ready to glide through five countries as we make our way to the Romanian capital of Bucharest and then on to Transylvania. Across the Danube, Budapest is really two cities in one. Stately Buda to the west with its castle and grand buildings, and Pest, the flat part of the city and home to its commercial centre, to the east. Many of the main tourist sites are on the Pest side, including the vibrant Central Market Hall, as well as the picturesque Seychelles Thermal Baths. It's not only rich in incredible architecture, but also cultural diversity with the largest Jewish population in Eastern Europe. We are just about to enter to the largest synagogue in Europe and the second largest one in the world. Finished in the middle of the 19th century and ever since it is the home of the Jewish people in Hungary. Dohan Street Synagogue is a sight to behold, both for the intricacy of the interior and for its size, with seating for up to 3,000 people. We had Jews practically living here from the third century. We actually found a big tombstone from the third century. And to be honest, from the Middle Ages, the population kept growing. And from the end of the 18th century, Joseph II, who gave quite a few rights to the Jews to settle down within the walls, a certain assimilation started. So many, many Jews from Spain and also from Poland arrived to Hungary in those days. Thanks to its many outside influences, it stands today as quite a unique structure. There are two pulpits over here. Exactly. <laughs> and there's actually even um, an enormous Organ, organ and I'm, I'm not certain I've seen anything like that in any other synagogue. No, you wouldn't. No, you wouldn't, because that is just a sign how they wanted to assimilate. To finish our day in the Hungarian capital, we're off to a scenic enrich event, a classical musical performance put on exclusively for us. It is gorgeous. gorgeous. Oh, thank you. It was built in the 18th century and that is actually the very first Baroque castle in Hungary. Baroque back in the 18th century was a very new thing here and this is the very first one which has a U shape but kind of inside out. So the garden is kind of surrounded by the palace. the performance. The sounds of Strauss and Mozart reverberating through this very regal ballroom. If that wasn't enough to make the day simply unforgettable, a night cruise along the Danube certainly will. Scenic Jewel is the best seat in the house to soak up this glorious city. Beautiful by day, but truly magical by night. Welcome back to Scenic's Danube Delta Discovery Tour. 
as we enter the Hungarian countryside and slowly glide our way into a glorious new day. I woke up this morning, I looked out my window and I saw this most peaceful, scenic view just drift by. And I thought to myself, this is really the way to do it. It's luxury, it's stylish, and so peaceful. Scenic Jewel is our not-so-humble abode for this cruise, and I'm proud to say she's the prettiest ship on the river. The Hungarian town of Koloska is today's port of call and a handy location to visit a traditional ranch known as a pushta. Here, cowboys demonstrate equestrian skills mastered centuries ago, but now maintained for tourists. It is like a time travel back to the 1800s, I can say. So what we will see, most of them are taken from real life. So uh, a couple of them are only tricks, but most of them were uh, used in everyday life. For example, uh, make the horse lay on the ground, that was not a trick, that was a surviving technique. Uh, if they were being chased by someone, they could make the horse lay on the ground and they could hide in the high grass. In the past, these skills were a matter of life and death. But now these Hungarian cowboys maintain their craft to preserve their long and proud heritage. OK, I'm going to look. Ah! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> OK, enough already. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much for the cooperation of the brave ladies. Further down the Danube is the sleepy and rather unassuming region of Villainy. The town itself is home to just a few thousand people and over a hundred wine cellars producing what is regarded as some of the country's best wines. Is that because the weather's different here? Or what's yes, it? it's a kind of microclimate here, which looks a little bit like Mediterranean climate. Oh, really? So there's a lot of sunshine during the summer especially, but also during the spring and during the autumn time. The old Romans were the ones who brought actually the grape to this area 2,000 years ago. This winery, Gunza Tomas, and indeed the entire southern Hungarian area, produces several varieties of vino, but it's the reds and rosés that they're best known for. The best red wine in the whole Hungary. I'm gonna put my nose in. It smells very deep and plummy. I would say that, uh, like, like, like berries. I like your wine. And just to be sure, I thought I'd sample the rest. So what is this we're drinking? So this is a very good, very good quality white wine called Mont Blanc. Mm -hmm. Is it good? Oh, it's delicious. Oh, oh. Cheers. How do you say cheers actually in Hungarian? It's a post. Egyszegedre. 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 Just like that. <laughs> Hungarian countryside, we've now crossed the border into Croatia on our Danube Delta Discovery Tour with Scenic. Osijek is Croatia's fourth largest city and it's home to a strong cultural and artistic heritage, a legacy from having been governed by so many different rulers from all over the globe. Sitting on the banks of the River Drava, the old town area is the best preserved and largest collection of Baroque buildings in Croatia. This is a famous water tower. Uh, one of the four gates uh, that served as entrance is into the fortress. A beautiful part of the city, uh, Fosiek, which was built uh, in the 18th century, thanks to the Habsburgs, mm. you know, Austrians. Right. So, um, well, speaking of Austrian, I can hear in the distance a beautiful rendition of Edelweiss. Rather than a regular city tour, Scenic offers a musical walking tour of Osijek to capture both its history and its artistic legacy. The Church of the Holy Cross isn't the largest church in town, 
and it's rather unassuming from the outside, but the interiors and the daily organ recital bring the centuries-old structure to life. In an environment like this, it's impossible to resist the invitation for an impromptu performance. location made it a wartime target and though many buildings remain intact and some have been restored there's still bullet holes and shrapnel. We had war here uh, from 1991 till 1998. Luckily, yeah, yeah, luckily this city was not occupied by Serbs. You know, Serbs and Croats were conflicted sites yeah. in that war. Uh, Why was it so valuable to them, this particular piece? Yeah, I'm, I mean, Slavonia region, east part of Croatia, is uh, very valuable because we have fertile soil. It's an agricultural part. And this city was interesting for them also because this is capital of Slavonia, yeah. fourth biggest city in Croatia. Being a traveller rather than a tourist is all about engaging with the locals. Welcome to our home. Thank you very much. Please come. Please. Okay. And here in Osijek, Please. scenic coordinate with families in the town to give guests the chance to really embrace that experience with a lunch invitation to a local home. Okay, girls. I have here a vegetable soup. Our hosts are the delightful Miriana and her daughter Helena. Every single item in here is from your garden. Uh, yes. Amazing. Oh, I love a homemade vegetable soup. I truly believe that when you grow and you serve your own food, it, it's better for you. It is. Yeah. I do. I, re I really believe that. Mm, yeah, yep. It's a lovely snapshot right. of the Croatian people and their warmth and hospitality, as well as learning about the Croatian way of life. Our driver was telling me that um, if he was to eat with us, he'd get into trouble with his mum because mealtimes are very important over the weekend with family. Yeah, especially if your mum is cooking, you know. <laughs> she's cooking all morning and then you don't come for lunch. That's, you get in a big mess. <laughs> yeah, is that right? From the little town of Osijek, it's back to our five-star abode on the river, Scenic Jewel, ready to glide us further down the Danube to our next port of call. One of the greatest things about these cruises is you only have to unpack once. I love it. And all that's left to do really is to just settle in, just make yourself right at home. Oh, except that it's not like home because you have a 24-hour butler service. <laughs> Winning! The beauty of travelling by ship is that you can wake up and gently glide your way into a new day and a new country. After experiencing Croatian hospitality, Scenic Jewel has now delivered us to Serbia and its fascinating capital, Belgrade. One of Europe's oldest cities, Belgrade is built on the confluence of two rivers, the Danube and the Sava. These days, the city's shaken off its turbulent past and emerged as a bustling modern metropolis with former socialist apartment blocks interspersed with heritage buildings and modern shopping malls. To really get a feel for the place, its people and its delicacies, we're going to do as the locals do and head to the market. 
I hope you are hungry. Yeah. I bought uh, some traditional Serbian breakfast. They call it burek. Burek. Believe it or not. And some plain yogurt, which usually they take for a breakfast. You open, you dip it inside and you're eating it. Oh, I'm joining Tibor, our wonderful head chef on board, for a unique Shop with the Chef experience, one of Scenic's free choice activities. It does taste a little bit like Australians have a sausage roll, right? Oh. Sausage roll. Right? Yes. Um, but this is sort of different because it's got... In fact, what the, is the oil? Because they have layers yeah, I know, of the pastry. Yes, it's not butter, though. Uh, not butter. They use usually a pork fat. A so pork, that's, that's why it tastes and it's, so uh, wicked. Yes. The Serbian diet is heavily meat-based and typically laden with fat. Not the place to start a diet. First, we come here. That's the ingredients is what you can buy when you're taking home something and want to cook. Yeah. And here is already prepared meats. This is like a takeaway. You order your stuff after half an hour, you can come back and it's already been prepared and cooked on the grill. And we move on to the second part of the market, we will collect our vegetables. Tibor makes these market visits at stops all along the cruise to ensure the guests on board get to sample the local flavours too. That's beautiful. Oh, it's like perfume. Can we take one, please? <laughs> yeah. Strawberries nice. should be just eaten right now. Yeah. Yeah. So please, try it. <laughs> you don't need to even wash it. Delicious, yum, oh, yum. Very oh. nice. After helping Chef get some of the goods for lunch, it's time to pick up our snacks straight from the grill. Yes. It smells let's, amazing. Okay, let's have a look. Oh, look at those. Look at that. Yes. I'm going to have a taste. Mm. So how does it taste like? Mm. I wonder if yours are going to be as good as these. Even better. <laughs> as well as a regular sightseeing tour, Scenic offers a student guided walk around the city. A chance to meet a local and understand what everyday life in Belgrade is like for the next generation. They want to go to faculty because they want to have a good career. career. They want to have uh, good salaries. Uh, they don't want to work uh, some dirty jobs like uh, in factories. Yes. Daniela's stroll around the city streets takes us along the city's main pedestrian strip, as well as venturing into what's now known as the Bohemian Quarter. The name is uh, Skadalia Street. Skadalia. And uh, this is uh, the most beautiful street in the Belgrade because you have uh, a lot of tavernas with national food and national drinks. Uh, you have music all day, live music. In the 1900s, the city's prominent writers and artists moved into this area, giving it the bohemian character that still remains today. Mm. 